good morning to everyone today we will discuss about hmp shun pathway hexose monophosphate shun pathway this is an alternative pathway for oxidation of glucose molecules glucose undergo oxidative in glycolysis and tca cycle it will give carbon dioxide other name for hmp shun pathway exos monophosphate pathway dickens horker pathway shunt pathway pentose phosphate pathway direct oxidative pathway or phosphogluconate oxidative pathway these are the alternative names for hmp shunt pathway 10% of glucose molecules per day are entering in this pathway the liver and rbc metabolize about 30% of glucose by this pathway the main purpose of shunt pathway is to produce ribose 5 phosphate and to generate nadph next coming to the sequence of reactions of hmp shunt is divided into two phases one is oxidative phase and non oxidative phase oxidative phase occurs in several organs liver adipose tissue adrenal cortex mammary glands testes and ovaries rbcs and lenses of eye nadph is generation is required for lipid synthesis or steroid synthesis next coming to the non oxidative phase it is present in all tissues and synthesis of ribose is possible in all tissues of the body next coming to the oxidative phase glucose 6 phosphate is converts to 6 phosphogluconolactone by the enzyme glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase this is the rate limiting enzyme it requires nad plus is converts to nadph plus and h plus 6 phosphogluconolactone converts to 6 phosphogluconate by the enzyme glucon gluconolactonase 6 phosphogluconate is converts to ribulose 5 phosphate by the enzyme 6 phosphogluconate dehydrogenase it requires nadp plus converts to nadp h plus h plus this is the oxidative phase it is important in the generation of nadp h it is used for synthesis of fatty acids cholesterol and steroids next coming to the non oxidative phase ribulose 5 phosphate with the help of epimerase converts to xylulose 5 phosphate with the help of isomerase it will give ribose 5 phosphate and then with the help of transketolase transfer of two carbon unit from xylulose 5 phosphate to ribose 5 phosphate that leads to generation of cetohydrolose 7 phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate with the help of transhaldolase transfer of three carbon unit from cetohydrolose 7 phosphate that leads to generation of erythrose 4 phosphate and fructose 6 phosphate transketolase and transaldolase enzyme depends on thiamine pyrophosphate coenzyme is thiamine pyrophosphate then erythrose 4 phosphate contains with xylulose 5 phosphate it will give glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and fructose 6 phosphate by the enzyme transketolase so this is the non oxidative phase 
you can observe here oxidative and non oxidative phase next coming to the summary of shunt problem for example six molecules of glucose are entering in this problem the first carbon atoms of all six glucose molecules are removed as six molecules of carbon dioxide so this is equivalent to complete oxidation of one molecule of glucose in this process 12 nadph are generated the remaining six molecules of five carbon pentoses are interchanged and five molecules of glucose are regenerated next coming to the regulation of hmp shunt pathway this pathway mainly regulated by the level of nadp plus the first reaction catalyzed by glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase this is the rate limiting enzyme it is inhibited by nadph the oxidative phase is controlled by level of nadp plus and non oxidative phase is controlled by the requirement of pentoses insulin will induce glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase and it will increase the overall pathway and this is the regulation of hmp shunt pathway next coming to the significance of hmp shunt pathway this is the important short note hmp shunt is generating two important products one is pentoses and second is nadph first pentoses in the hmp shunt exoses are converted into pentoses the most important being ribose 5 phosphate these pentoses are useful for the synthesis of nucleic acids rna and dna and many nucleotides such as atp nad plus fad and coenzyme a next nadph which is required for synthesis of fatty acids cholesterol and steroid hormones it it acts as free radical scavenging it maintain the rbc membrane integrity it prevents the formation of methemoglobin and detoxification by hydroxylation it maintain the transparency of lenses it acts as bacterial activity of macrophages so this is the clinical significance of hmp shunt pathway next coming to the clinical importance of shunt pathway glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency drug induced hemolytic anemia meth hemoglobinemia thiamine deficiency that leads to decreased transcriptolase activity first one glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency this enzyme deficiency may be seen in some persons it is an x linked condition it will lead to drug induced hemolytic anemia the deficiency is manifested only when exposed to certain drugs or toxins for example intake of anti malarial drugs like primaquin and ingestion of fava beans in gpd deficient cells nadph is low hence further production of peroxid peroxides will lead to cell lysis sulfur drugs may also precipitate the hemolysis this will lead to jaundice and severe anemia next meth hemoglobinemia glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficient persons will show increased meth hemoglobin 
in circulation next thiamine deficiency the occurrence and manifestations of warnicki korsakoff syndrome which is seen in alcoholics and those with thiamine deficiency is due to deficiency in enzyme transcriptolysis activity